Okay, today we're going to talk about the cowling, the bottom cowling in this case is where we're going to start. Uh, this will be just part one of a series for this one because it's going to be an iterative process and at some point uh, we're going to have to stop while we make the plenum. So what is the general plan for the cowling for the RV4? Uh, well, the plans will say that it gets a piano hinge along the side of the fuselage, piano hinge along where the top cowling meets the bottom cowling as well as the front intersection up here. And then another piano hinge that will go along the firewall at the top. Uh, piano hinges work really well on straight areas. So works well here, works well here. Uh, this area uh, can be troublesome, even though they use a smaller diameter pin in the, in the piano hinge it can still be quite difficult to get it on and off. So what I prefer to do is to have screw fasteners along the curved surface. And in my case, I'm gonna use the Skybolt quarter turn fasteners along the firewall. We're actually gonna use Skybolt uh, here as well. There's room for three. And then the plan along the side here is gonna to be to put a, a, the piano hinge as per the plans. Uh, one other thing on the piano hinge is that uh, there is normal uh, piano hinge that is bent formed and then there's extruded piano hinge. So I'll show you what both of those look like and uh, show you the benefits of one over the other. So here's the piano hinge. This one is from the kit, uh, part number MS20257-3. And this is a bent piano hinge. So it's a cut aluminum and then all the rings are actually bent formed around and then of course there's a pin in the middle. Um, as opposed to this, which is extruded hinge, this is the MS2001-3, so it's the same size. However, this is a milled piece. So they don't bend it over, they just mill the aluminum, so it's quite a bit stronger. Um, so I prefer using this MS2001 extruded hinge. And just to make it super obvious, I'll show you what the end uh, looks like. So here are the two piano hinges. And I've actually bent the end of this one with pliers just to make it a bit more evident. So you can see that when this one's formed, it's a cut piece of aluminum, and then the eyelets are actually formed uh, around and then the pin is uh, put in the middle. As opposed to the extruded one, hopefully you can see there that it is actually a milled piece, so there is no bending required in there. It's just milled straight out of aluminum, so it ends up quite a bit stronger. So that's the hinge that I recommend, and that's the hinge that I use on all my cowlings. Okay, so how do we start uh, the cowling? It's a little bit awkward to work with when you first get it. Um, first thing is, it's not gonna fit around the gear legs. So the initial thing to do on the RV4 is just kind of lift it in place and I just use a couple cargo straps at the beginning, put one cargo strap over the back and one over the front. And then just lift the cowling approximately in place uh, where it's gonna end up and then start milling out or start grinding uh, the corner of the cowling away to clear the gear legs. A little bit at a time. We'll end up cutting a lot more of the cowling off later. Once we get the intersection fairing on here and it's all sc screwed or bonded in place, uh, then we can go back and remove the extra little bit of cowl that's really not doing anything. So that may be, uh, we'll have a lot more room down there later. But for now, all we want to do is uh, clear the gear leg. It's also wise to tape things up. So this is gonna go on and off a few times. It's gonna scratch, so tape off the gear legs, tape off the back of the prop if you don't want to, um, if you don't wanna scuff it up while you're, while you're putting this on and off a hundred times. Now, once you've cleared the gear legs, now it's just shimming it forward and back to get it approximately where it's gonna end up. Uh, the plans call for a quarter inch gap between the prop spinner and the cowling which is fine and it actually works reasonably well in a tail dragger airplane. If you're building a nose gear airplane, you might wanna enlarge that gap a little bit. You're probably gonna have a bigger fairing on the front that clears the, the nose gear leg, um, but you can imagine that as the cowling comes down on a nose gear, it's gonna have to come forward a little bit to clear the gear leg there. So you might have to open up that gap a little bit more. Uh, it's nice to have it super tight back there. It looks good when it's all painted and sitting on the ramp at Oshkosh, but in practical sense, getting the cowling on and off, it's gonna get dinged quite a bit. Uh, the other thing you wanna think about is two or three bladed props. So if you have a three bladed prop, again, you're probably gonna to want to increase that gap there a little bit because 
you can't put the prop horizontal like we have it here for our two blade whirlwind prop. Uh, again, the cowling is probably gonna have to come down a lot more to clear uh, where the prop blades are sitting. So that's one thought there. Uh, yeah, it looks nice to have it small, but practicality sense, um, bigger is better, I find. So we have, a, we have about a quarter inch there now, and it's not gonna be perfect all the way around the prop flange either. So don't worry too much about it right now. We're probably gonna have to go back later fill in some fiberglass trim and remove parts where we need to open up the gap or we need to close the gap with filler. So that's stuff we can worry about later. We try and get it as close as possible. Okay, so now we got it in. The other thing that we want, do not be afraid of punching holes in fiberglass. All right, so we can take little angle brackets. Uh, the bottom here is a nice example on the RV4 where you have the curve of the fuselage and there's a few rivets around there. Uh, don't be afraid drilling out a rivet putting a piece of angle in there with the number 40 hole and a clico, and then now you have a piece of aluminum that you can then hold the cowling with. Um, and then you could actually drill into the cowling. So don't worry about drilling holes here, up and front in the prop flange, I'll show you in a second. All fiberglass, and it's all gonna be filled in later if the holes aren't required. So we have a lot of alignment holes that I like to use in fiberglass to help me as much as possible uh, to hold it in place. So now we have it up, we have it clearing the gear legs, um, and we have our approximately quarter inch gap around the prop there. And now we start clamping and screwing it in place in the front with all those little holder plates, like I'll show you in a sec. And then we start just adjusting it back and forth a little bit until we're happy with it. So let's uh, spin around to the front and I'll show you the, the connections that we have there. So here we are on the front of the, of the cowling where we've positioned it kind of side to side as well as looking you know, where the curve on the cowling would match up with where the spinner would be. So we've taken a couple screws uh, that would go directly into the spinner backing plate here, and we put a couple aluminum plates, and again, we've drilled number 30 holes so that we can actually hold the cowling reasonably in place. Uh, if it's not exactly where you want it, then just pop these clecos out, adjust it, drill another hole. Again, don't be afraid of punching holes in this thing to help you align everything because it's quite it's quite difficult to, to handle because it's a you know it's a big kind of flimsy piece so it's going to take some kind of side to side all right we have a couple of other angles up here that then also go into the back of the spinner plate and those are clamped right now to the to the cowling but i actually prefer to again screw holes in there to hold it nicely in place so it's kind of reasonably in place all we have is two clecos on the back and two clecos on the front and two clamps up here and we're reasonably happy uh, with where we have it. We look at our gap along the, the back of the spinner. It's a little bit bigger at the bottom here. It's about three eighths of an inch, whereas at the top, it's a quarter inch. So later on, we'll go back and, and fill it in if you wanna make it nice and, nice and pretty. Uh, just one other thing on the fastener on the side here. It might depend uh, on what engine you have installed. So on the RV8, we had the angle valve engine. It was a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. And in fact, we didn't have room to put the sky bolt fasteners uh, along the edge here. It ended up hitting the rocker covers on the engine. So the sky bolt fasteners, uh, you know, they're about probably five eighths inch depth, maybe half inch depth. So you do need a bit of room behind the cowling to put them on. In this case here on the RV4, we got about an inch on the back of cylinder uh, number four here and on the front, we have probably a, just a little bit more than that, maybe an inch and an eighth or so. So we probably have room to put the sky bolt fasteners uh, there, uh, but we're gonna, I think the plan is gonna be put the extruded hinge along the side, because it does work nicely for uh, areas that are either straight or just have small curves to them. And it's nice and strong and it's very easy to get in and out. All right, now that we've got everything in place, um, I'll show you the sky bolt uh, connectors in the back here once we take this cowling off. And we just have one Clico here. This is actually going through one of the rivet holes that's gonna hold the sky bolt fastener on. So again, later on, after the whole cowling is fit and done, this hole is gonna get filled and sanded over and you'll never know that we even punched it there. But once we had everything where we want it, we just reached inside with an angle drill bit punched a hole through one of those rivet holes so that now we have a way to hold the cowling. Uh, before we did that, again, you could put a piece of aluminum angle down here to hold it in place, or in my case, I just used Gorilla Tape and I just Gorilla Taped it to the fuselage and just watch it and make sure it doesn't uh, move while you're doing that. 
So now we're happy with where everything is. The cowling is obviously going to need to be trimmed at some point. So an interesting way to do that, and if you're building a, if you're not building an RV4, that an RV4 has this curved surface here where the extra little fiberglass fairing is going to go in the back. So it can be quite hard to angle, like where exactly do we curve this part where it's not touching the fuselage. So it's easier if you're building a six, seven, eight, or a nine, or any of the other RVs really. Uh, you put a piece of masking tape. This is an inch wide masking tape. Then you put the cowling on. Of course, it's gonna be flush all the way up to the top here. And then you'll just measure back an inch from that tape, make little lines on the cowling, and that's your nice mark for where the firewall ends up. Gap between the firewall and the cowling. So don't butt it up super tight. Again, the cowling going on and off, it's going to get banged up. It's going to bang your paint on the, on the fuselage and you need a little bit of a room for, for paint. So I recommend, you know, 16th of an inch kind of as a minimum between where the cowling ends and where the fuselage begins. So you should have a little bit of a line there such that when the aircraft's painted and all done, you're not going to get a lot of rubbing and chipping of the paint there. So again, yeah, it's nice to have it butt up really nice and it looks good when the airplane's first done but over time it's gonna wear, it's gonna not look as great. So how do we measure this line for the RV4? Well, I like just use a uh, laser, laser level with has a vertical line on it. And I bring the back of the fuselage up with a little jack or, or sawhorses or whatever uh, stand you want um, until such time that that vertical laser line hits the bottom of the fuselage where the green tape is and where it hits the top of the fuselage where there's green tape. And then I just draw on the, on the cowling where the laser line ends up. For the RV4 especially, when you're jacking it up from the back like that, where the wings aren't on, in this case the rudder isn't on, the interior isn't in, but the engine and the prop is on, so there's quite a bit of forward weight on this one. So for this RV4, if you lift the tail up to horizontal, it will actually over-center and butt, butt down on its nose, which would be a bad day. So be very careful doing that. Um, I actually took a bunch of bucking bars and put them in a bag and then put them on top of the horizontal stab in the back just to give me that extra security weight where when I'm bringing this up to match this laser line here, that the aircraft doesn't go beyond the forward pitch C of G, uh, which is normal for this stage when the wings are off and the rudders off and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, don't worry about the C of G, the actual airplane. It's going to be fine. There's lots of RV4s running 360 engines and con speed props. So I think that's about it for now. Our next step is we'll actually drill the angle on the front behind the prop so we can get the clamps out of the way. And when we get the clamps out of the way, we can put the top cowling on just to see where everything kind of lies. And then we'll go ahead, uh, we'll cut this line, and then we'll use a big sanding block to make it nice and straight put the cowling back on. Now, the next time we put the cowling on, it's going to be a lot easier because we have a cleco hole here. We have two in the front and we'll have two cleco holes right behind where the prop is. So it'll be a lot easier to lift it up and cleco it in place. So here are the three plates for the Skybolt fasteners that we have installed here. And they actually supply these aluminum brackets that have the pre-cut holes for the Skybolt fastener right here. And these are half inch depth. So you do, when you place them on aircraft, you have to make sure that you have uh, the clearance behind. So as we previously discussed on the RV-8 that we didn't have the clearance along the side up here because of the valve covers. So just being careful that you actually have half an inch uh, behind to play with. Now when riveting these on, obviously these, uh, these aluminum plates will overlap each other. So we need to make sure, I'll just take this tape off here to show you. So we need to make sure that when we rivet these plates on, that where the two plates overlap, we actually end up with a rivet. So I use a little measuring uh, fan to space out these rivets. They end up just over one inch of spacing so that we get a rivet here where it ends, a rivet where those two overlap, a rivet where those two overlap, and again, a rivet at the end here. So just drawing a little black line where the intersection is. And then this is a nice neat tool uh, to place on here to figure out kind of what spacing you end up uh, with those. And you can adjust it as, as you see fit to hit where those two overlap there. So it's a nice little tool and a fast way to, fast way to do it. 
So that's all the room we have for on the side of the RV4 is just three of these because now the cowling of course comes out here. Uh, if you're doing this in a six or any other RV for that matter, um, then you're, you could run these cam locks all the way up. Although you have to be careful of where does the cowling split. So for an RV7, for example, you're going to end up with a split, uh, you know, not right at the top of the Longeron. It's going to split kind of further down. So you have to have a good idea of where the cowling is going to end so that you don't end up putting one of these cam locks too close to the edge of the first cowling. So you want a good, you know, 5 8 inch offset from, from where the cowling starts to where your first fastener is going to end up. So you have to be careful with that uh, for the other RV models. Okay, so we've drilled all the sky bolts. Now, all of these holes that you see here are sacrificial holes. So these will all get filled in later. We're just back drilling through where the actual cam lock is going to rivet onto the plate. Uh, was able to back drill all of them using the angle drill bit. Except the very bottom one, couldn't get at it because it's uh, just a bit too deep in the cowling for the, for the drill to reach. Uh, we have these little templates that Skybolt gives you and it actually has the, the pattern layout for the holes. So now what we'll do is we'll click all these patterns in place, then we'll drill number 30 hole through the middle and that will mark where our cam lock is going to go. And then we'll open up that hole to the required diameter. I think the instructions will say to, for the cam lock to open that just shy of a half an inch. Um, but I actually personally find that half an inch works better. It gives the fastener a little bit more play um, to line up properly. So uh, do it per the instructions. And if it's just a bit too tight uh, to get the cam lock in there, then, then feel free to open it up to a half inch to give it a bit more play. Uh, one thing I should mention about the cam locks actually, they will actually lock in place. So there's a little lock spring that goes in the back. Um, if you haven't painted your airplane yet and you plan on painting it someday, I recommend not locking the cam locks on um, because they're difficult to get off. So how I do it, and even after the airplane's painted, personally I do it the same way because I find the cowling is easier to get on and off. When I remove the quarter turn fastener, the fastener actually comes out into my hand and I just put it in my pocket as opposed to having the lock ring on the back and then you just quarter turn it and then it stays locked to the cowling. Of course, now you're gonna have to spring the cowling open a little bit to coerce it off the aircraft. So it takes a little bit of effort, um, but definitely a consideration if you haven't painted your airplane yet so that someday when you do go to paint it, you can just pop all those fasteners off really quickly and not have to worry about the lock rings. So this bottom hole here, how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna shine a light on the inside, do our best using a template lineup and a number 30 bit to get that second hole. Then we'll punch the middle holes and then we'll enlarge those to just under half inch. And then we'll click the cam locks on and then that should be it for the bottom cowling. So let's do that next.
Okay, we got our three sky bolts in here. Now, that, that pin in there, like I said, is gonna keep that middle part free spinning. So we can tighten these screws all the way until we're happy with the fit of the cowling. All right, then we'll pop these pins out. And you'll probably need a pair of pliers to get them out. Pop the pin out. Turn the fastener until you hear it lock. There. And now it's a quarter turn fastener. So the, the drum inside is now locked now that we took that pin out. And there's our quarter turn fastener. Locks in place. Simple as that. Makes it really nice for getting the cowling on and off easily. Okay, so there's our bottom cowling uh, nicely started, installed with the sky bolt fasteners in the back and still clecoed at the front. So now we can start working on the trim line, start putting the top cowling on, uh, and then joining those two. Uh, just to talk about the sky bolts a little bit more, actually. Uh, the ones that I like to use are floating, which means that the middle um, threaded section actually can move around a little bit. It's not much, it's only about an eighth of an inch or so. It's just held in there with a little retaining uh, pin. Um, but those are the ones that I recommend to let the fasteners move a little bit and align properly. Uh, I think you have to ask for these specifically when you order a kit. So if you order a specific RV Skybolt kit, I think they come with two different types of these fasteners. One will be floating, which is intended for curved surface, and the other one will be rigid, which would be intended for a flat surface. I personally prefer the floating one everywhere um, because once you rivet those in, that middle thing cannot move at all and you might end up with a bit of misalignment. So the floating ones really help you uh, nicely align the fuselage. All right, so that'll be it for the bottom cowling for now. That concludes kind of part one of the cowling installation. Uh, again, we'll start working on this trim line. We'll start working on the top cowling. Fastening the front, we'll do the gross cutout in the front for the circular air intakes. And then at that point, we'll probably pull it all off, throw the baffling on, and start working on the plenum. So it's a nice start. It's a little bit awkward to deal with at the start, but just take your time. Make some nice measurements. You'll get it nice and clean against the fuselage in the back if you take your time, and it's actually not that bad. And then again, it's all fiberglass, so any of these holes there's six holes on each side that will be, need to be filled later. So don't be afraid of putting, uh, of putting retaining holes all over this cowling to hold it exactly where you want while you do all this work. So hopefully that helps you with your installation. Build yourself something, take it for a rip. We'll see you in the next video.